the only reason I'm agreeing with him is it just doesn't make sense to disagree with the station manager. Besides, numbers don't lie. If the ratings have been way down. Oh, what now? I don't believe in ratings anyway. Every place I go, people say they see the show and they will, but why don't they call those people once in a while? Hey, Dick. Huh? Uh, do you know when you'll be home for dinner tonight? Late, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, honey. How's your cold? It's coming right along. And how was the meeting with Atwater? Wonderful. I just found out I can't carry my show alone. Now, he didn't say that. He just said he thought the show might be improved if Dick had somebody else on the show that he could talk to, uh, a sidekick. I've been doing that show alone for 10 years now, and now I need Tonto. <laughs> Is that so bad? You don't think that's bad? No. I mean, if it's somebody good, it might take some of the pressure off you. Good, I'll get Gabby Hay. What are you going to do now, Dick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on. What are you making such a big fuss about? At least he didn't cancel the show. Yet. Cancel the show? You're certainly not concerned about them canceling the show. Oh, concerned? Oh, no, no, no. Of course, they, first they get a new sidekick, then they get a new band, then they get a new me, and it's, that's it. Oh, Dick, nobody could take your place. Don't be so sure. At least nobody who'd live in Phoenix. Except maybe a beginner or a dumb kid. <laughs> Why not a kid? You know, it's a youth-oriented world now. The kids are taking over. Dick, every time you get a bad cold, you think you're getting old. Well, uh, honey, I'm getting pushed out. Dick, you're so talented. You, you can do so many things. You'll always find a way to make money. Well, I better start looking, I think. <laughs> honey, I'll help you with dinner. Are they staying? Yeah. Charge them two dollars each. Now I'm me. Now I'm a puppet. <laughs> Welcome to the Dick Preston Show, gang, starring Dick Preston. We've got an entire show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> thank you, you, thank you very much. That's very interesting. We'll, we'll call you. Yeah, but don't you want to hear us sing, too? I no. can't. Look at this, huh? Well, we'll I do an impression. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I can't see. <laughs> I can't. No, I can't see. I've got, I've got more eyes under the hat. <laughs> uh, would you look at his name, Mike? Oh, I'll remember him. It's Cheek Eye. I'm Cheek Eye the Sailor Boy. <laughs> so long, folks. <laughs> Who else do we have out there to help improve my show? Some kid named Danny Turner. What does he do, paint eyes on his chest and whistle through his belly button? <laughs> I don't know, he might. You're bossing him over. Oh. That's right, Dick. I sent him over. Now look, before you meet Danny, I, uh, hello, Bernie. Hi, Mikey. <laughs> I, uh, want you to, uh, pay particular attention to him and extend every courtesy. Well, what does he do, Ted? He appeals to me, Dick. That's what he does. <laughs> Danny Turner, I want you to be Dick Preston. Hi, Dick. Hi. Right. You feel that appeal? Right? I was right. That's what we need on the show, Dick. That's what we need. So long, Ted. Thanks. Yeah. All right, let's get down. How many people did you audition today for the job? Well, I'm nice. About uh, ten, I guess. Uh, if I showed up a little earlier, I could have saved you all that pain. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to be Bernie Davis, huh? You heard of me, huh? No, I read your door. <laughs> I, I, I know she's not Bernie. <laughs> You're not built like a Bernie. <laughs> What's your name, sweetheart? Uh, Mike. Well, you're not built like a mic either. But if you're a mic, you're one mic I wouldn't mind singing into. Testing, one, two, one. Two. <laughs> coming through? Oh, yes. Uh, could we get on with it? Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, Mr. Turner, what, what exactly do you do? Well, I, uh, I do a little of everything and a lot of something. Well, could we hear a little of anything? Sure. How about a song? Well, a song? A song would be fine. Good. Do you need an accompanist? I don't need anybody. I have my own band. <laughs> Sit down. Sit down, folks. It's show time. <laughs> Gray skies are gonna clear up. Put on a happy face. Brush off the clouds and cheer up. Put on a happy face. Call back in 16 bars. All over the place. And put on a happy face. Face. Happy face. When do I start? <laughs> Well, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Turner, that's, you sing very, very well. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, also this is an afternoon show, and besides singing, we also like to interview people. We chat. Oh, I love chatting. I chat, I chat, but I have a good, you chat, I'll chat. Well, <laughs> how about we talk about... How about ecology? Uh, well, that's a good, uh, good subject. Uh, what, what, what do you think about uh, water pollution? Water pollution. I'm glad you asked me that. We're doing a lot of heavy thinking about that. I think that uh, water pollution is very economical. You do? Sure. You get polluted on water, look at all the money you save on booze. <laughs> Pally. I got another appointment. You know, okay, keep all people waiting unless you make your decision. I'll call you back later. So long, Freddy. Mike. What's the difference? You're beautiful. Hey, you never asked me if I was married. Are you? I'll check. I'll check. <laughs> so long, Bernie. Seems pretty good. Yeah, he just wasn't so shy. 
You never gave cockeyed a sailor a chance to sing. <laughs> Thanks a lot for telling me, Ted. What does he start? Tomorrow? But don't you think you should have at least talked to me about it before? Well, why not? I, Ted, I don't think that's any reason. But I'm not raising my voice. I, I, boy, is he bad. How do you like that? He just hires Danny Turner as my partner, and he's mad. Well, you did say he was the best one. I know, but I wanted to hire him. Why? So I could fire him. <laughs> I mean, this way, the station has all the authority, and personally, I, d I don't think that my audience is going to like him. Well, if he is good and the ratings go up, then he'll be good for you, won't it? Well, the ratings aren't going to be good if I'm not good, and I can't be good if I don't feel that it's my show. I'm not going to sit around here and let my career be thrown out the window. Now who are you calling? I'm going to call that one. Oh, honey, you just said he was angry. Now, why call him back and make him angrier? Let him get angrier. I don't care how angry he gets. Hello, who is this? <laughs> I didn't think he'd get that angry. Terrible. She's right. You better go down and get into makeup. Yeah. I just came for a baby. <laughs> Hi, Daddy. How you doing, Ace? All set for your debut? Yeah, apple pie. What do you want me to lay on the folks? Well, <coughs> there is one thing, Daddy. You know, the people in this area are, are marvelous, basic kinds of people. Mm -hmm. And I think if you took some of the big city out of your voice and put a little more small town into it, they'd like you better. I dig. You mean uh, rub it up? Ruben, uh, well, no. no you can't. Exactly. I dig, I dig, I dig. More hick than shtick. <laughs> Don't worry about a thing, dicky boy. I can play the old Mickey Mouse humble bit. All we gotta do is tighten up the looseness and square off the edges. Make the people love us. We're gonna spread joy up to the maximum and bring gloom down to the minimum. Phoenix will rise again. <laughs> It's the Dick Preston Show, and here he is, the man we named it after, Dick Preston! Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to the show. We have a very surprising and exciting show for you today. The uh, management of this station thought we needed a little help on this show. Kind of livened it up a little bit, naturally. I disagreed, thinking it was lively enough. But uh, yesterday afternoon, a young man came into my office and sang for us. And believe me, he is so talented that I'm glad he's on our show and not against us. Would you please welcome, <coughs> help me in welcoming Mr. Daddy Turner. Whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong, whether I find a place in this world or never belong, I've got to be me. I've got to be me. What else can I be but what I am? I want to live, not merely survive. And I won't give up this dream of life that keeps me alive. I've got to be me. I've got to be me. The dream that I see makes me what I am. That far away prize, a world of success is waiting for me if I heed the call. I won't settle down or settle for less. As long as there's half a chance, I can have it all. I'll go it alone. That's how it must be. I can't be right for somebody else if I'm not right for me. I've got to be free. I've got to be free. Daring to try to do it or die, I've got to be me. Thank you very much. What a wonderful audience. Wow. Yeah. Gosh, thank you. They really did love you. <laughs> Golly. Yeah. I, I used to do a little singing. <laughs> oh, they loved it, Danny. Well, wow. after that terrific introduction you gave me, Dick, boy, I, I don't see how anybody could miss. <laughs> I, may, may I say something, Dick? Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, there's, there's a lot of great talent here in Phoenix and a lot of wonderful people auditioning for this show. And 
for some strange reason, this kind man here picked me, and I'm forever grateful, Dick. I really am. I mean, I've been around singing some clubs all over the country, and, and golly, the first time I came into this town, I, I mean, I, I knew that this was the place I, I dreamed about, and, and Dick, you, you sure made a dream come true for me. I hope I don't let you down. And, and ladies and gentlemen, I sure hope I don't let you down. And, and while I'm hoping, I, I sure hope you like me and my songs, because I'd sure like to make Phoenix my permanent home. <laughs> Uh, right now, let's have a little word from Orrin. Orrin. Orrin Tubbs cough syrup, the, the cough remedy that really works. <laughs> right, Dick? Hey, yeah, Dick, why don't you take a taste of that? Oh, oh it'll be good for you. Fix that cough up real, real fast. Sure, great, great stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to him tomorrow, you're too sick. I want to get something out of my system. Oh, Ted. Well, I feel pretty bad. Well, I don't feel that bad. What the, wait, wait, he can. He, he, what do I, 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 what do you do? Well, I see. Yeah, goodbye. Sure glad you got that out of your system. Very funny. What did he say? told me to stay home tomorrow. Daddy Turner's going to do the show. Well, listen, the doctor said you had to stay in bed. Somebody has to take your place. Do you know that Atwater took somebody out for a drink yesterday? So? You remember the last time he took me out for a drink? When? The day I got the job. That's when. <laughs> I'm finished. Oh, honey. <laughs> I am. I'm finished. Finished. The same thing's happened to me that happened to the guy that I replaced. But, honey, he was no good. He was old head. Well, now we're getting down to it. Old, old, old. Oh. You know, I'll be glad when this fever is over and you're back to your old self again. Yeah, it's old self. Old, old. <laughs> Try to get some sleep. <laughs> well, don't forget to wake me up by one. I don't want to miss the show and see my life crumbling before my eyes. On. Oh. <laughs> it's the Nick Preston Show, and here he is filling in for Dick, Dick's own discovery, a young man who came on the show for the first time yesterday and is back today as the star, Danny Turner. Whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong, whether I find a place in this world or never belong, I've got to be me. I've got to be me. I've got, I got to tell you, hold it, Jerry, Jerry, hold it. I, I got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that this song and the entire show today is dedicated to the man himself, Dick Preston. Dick, we know you're out there watching, and get better real quick and hurry back, will you? And uh, help you feel a little bit better. We invited a dear friend of mine, an old friend of mine. He heard a fellow performer was sick, so he came right over to help me out. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend and my buddy, Mr. Carl Reiner. Where did you get that old buddy stuff? He's passing through down the front of the movie. But we booked him on the show two weeks ago. Oh, I was delighted to have you, Carl. Uh, I guess you know the man that usually sits in this chair is homesick, so I'm sure you'd like to say a personal hello. Huh? How you betcha. Get well, Dick Peterson. Preston. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Rick. Dick, 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 Dick. <laughs> Operator, I want to call Atlanta, Georgia, Mr. Phil Erickson. Well, <coughs> I don't know the number, but it's station WACF. Yes, this is Dick Preston at 488-3138. You can call me back. Why are you calling Phil Erickson? I'm going job hunting, and I've let my fingers do the walking for me. <laughs> you remember what he said when I left there 10 years ago? He said, if Dick, if you ever need a job, all you got to do is pick up the phone. Well, it's time to take steps. Well, that's a step backwards. Honey, when you're standing on the edge of a cliff, the only step you can take is backwards. I just don't believe you. Here you are, one of the most charming, successful hosts on TV, and you're acting like a child. If I'm so good, how's come I about to lose my job? You're not about to lose your job. You've just lost your confidence. Do you think that if this happened to Johnny Carson, he'd behave or act this way? Of course not. He'd know there's going to be a job open in Phoenix. <laughs> I've got to 
gotta be free. <laughs> I don't think that kid's so good. He only knows one song. <laughs> Again. Listen, can Bernie talk to Dick? He's resting now. No, I don't rest, really buddy. Who is it? Bernie calling. Oh. Hi, Bernie. Dick, did that want to call you? No, he didn't call me. What did he ask? Because I thought he might call you. What about? About what I heard. What did you hear? I happened to be in on a meeting with Atwater, the sales manager, and the program director. Oh, boy. Bernie was on a meeting with Atwater, the sales manager, the program director. Where was the meeting? In the men's room. <laughs> In the bedroom? Yeah, but they didn't see me, Dick. <laughs> what did they say? There's going to be a big shake-up in the afternoon schedule. Danny Turner is going to have his own show. Where? In our time slot. The dirty Danny Turner. What else? Nothing. They just washed up and left. <laughs> it looks like I've washed up and left, too. You want me to talk to Atwater? No, no. No, nobody talks for me. I'm going to come down there. I'm going to quit. No, you're not going to do anything. Now, Dick, you can't believe everything you hear in a men's room. I'm coming down there. So, I'm not old, huh? I'm not old. Danny Turner just stole my show. What? That's right. He stole your show. Yeah, he's taking over. I'm going down there. You're not in any condition to go anywhere, Dick. <laughs> But, but what are you doing here? I came down to find out what you want to do on the show tomorrow. Well, you want me to do, make my farewell speech? What farewell speech? Dick, would you please go back to bed? Mr. <laughs> under the circumstances, I don't think it was very wise of you to come by here today. Well, what did I do? He got sick. I took over for one day. For one day? You don't know that they're planning to have you take over Dick's show permanently? Me? Take over Dick's show? Really? Really. That's great! <laughs> hey, where did you hear this? In the men's room. <laughs> You heard? Dick, could you please take those clothes off? Where do you think you're going? I'll go down to that station to reside. Hey, Dick, you gotta believe me. I don't know anything about this. I suppose you're sorry, huh? No, no, I'm, I'm thrilled for me. I'm sorry for you, yeah. Yeah. You're not sorry. Oh, my show, you say, I want to be me, I want to be me. You didn't want to be you, you want to be me. Well, me and him would be too bad. Would you tell Mr. Atwater I want to see him right away, immediately? <laughs> Thank you, Sybil. Dick, what, what are you doing down here? I thought you were sick. <coughs> oh, you are sick. <laughs> Look, Dick, uh, what I have to tell you isn't easy. I want to tell you something. I have been at this station for a good many years now. When I first came here, there was nobody watching your station from 1 to 2.30. Now, I built that time, Ted, and I got, I got a lot of friends for the station. I made a lot of money for the station, and I've had a lot of opportunities to go elsewhere. Well, I live by a word that you don't seem to understand. I'm going to give it to you right now. That word is... No. No. Loyalty. Loyalty. Dick, I know that the 1 to 230 spot has been yours for many years. And up until this year, well, we just couldn't desire any more. But, well, we figured it'd go on forever. A dick, in TV, forever is for five years. And you've been on for ten years. <laughs> I mean, that's two forevers. Now, you would do for us more than we would ask. So we have decided that we just won't ask you to do anymore. We're going to take that 1 o'clock spot and uh, give it to Danny Turner. Ted? I've never been fired from a job in my life, and I'm not going to start right now. There are plenty of stations and plenty of cities this, in this country we tickle to have me. I don't blame you for being angry, Dick, but you've got to trust me. I know this business, and it's all for the best. Sure, for you. No, 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 Dick. For you, too. Well, how's it looking for me if I got a show? Dick, we're not taking away your show. You're not? No, we're just taking away your time. <laughs> well, how can I do a show if I haven't got any time in the men's room? Danny is taking a new 15-minute show on your 1 o'clock old spot. Then your 1 o'clock show will come on regularly at 1.15. We know he's fired? Of course not, Dick. I don't fire anyone. We're just uh, cutting the uh, cooking show. The cooking show? Well, what about the cheerful chef? Well, he just goes with the show. <laughs> well, uh, then then you're, you're firing him. Dick, how can I fire a man who doesn't even have a show? <laughs> being very logical, Dick. I mean, look, did you really actually think that we wouldn't treat you like the star you are? Well, I don't know. The rumors and the... Oh, headline, I don't... Dick! Dick, we do understand loyalty here. <laughs> I mean, loyalty <laughs> is the foundation of the Compton Broadcasting Company. I mean, 
Loyalty is our byword. <laughs> what about the cheerful chef? He's been here for 50 years. Well, Dick, that's uh, more loyalty than most people deserve. Uh, 15 years? That's three forevers, Dick. <laughs> Let's just say that he outlived his loyalty. Part two. I knew it. Guys are gonna clear up, put on a happy face. Brush off the clouds and cheer up, put on a happy face. Oh, wait a minute, you guys, all right? Tonight at 8 on the Million Dollar Movie, Jerry Lewis Week continues with Boeing, Boeing, co starring Tony Curtis. Now, stay tuned for the Mary Tyler Moore Show, next here on TV 39.